Yep. So, we're out here in good old Indiana. Uh, running towards Gary right now. Probably going to get a reset in uh, if things don't work out, but if they do, I'll be cruising on down the road. Uh, I still got good hours left. Figure I could carry those into next week. And uh, I just got to make it till Thursday. So it's not like running a reset is really going to make much sense. Uh, I mean, if I was going to be out the whole rest of the week, maybe I'd do it, but it's not really worth it. I'll just run the hours that I got now. Hopefully it works out like that. Um, but yeah, this, this load that I got right now uh, came as a relay to me. Uh, and for those of you who don't know what a relay is, uh, <clears throat> You know how in track and field, when they're, they got like a team of runners, like four runners, and they run 250 meters of a thousand meter track. And they, they run it in pieces. They call that a relay, when they hand off the baton and the other person keeps going. And that, that is the same concept behind uh, a relay load in trucking, is someone else is coming towards you or they got something dropped at a yard and you're there to pick it up and keep going to where it needs to go. Uh, and that has been sort of the theme of my my week, I guess. Uh, man, that cop did a U-turn back there too. That's weird. I don't know what they're doing. I saw another cop do that too. He, ran, he, he took another U-turn and went going back the same way I'm going right now. I don't know what the heck they're doing. But that is neither here nor there. Uh, the relay game. Uh, let, me, let me just explain to you how, how the week's been going. Uh, so I started off. You got to be kidding me. All right. I hate when that happens. Get, get a red light right at the, right at the wrong point. It's just, you're, you're like too close to slow down comfortably and I don't know, I don't like it. But, it that's all good. Uh, so the beginning of this week, I started off, went over to this little place on the west side of, gear please, thank you. Went over to this place on the west side of Wisconsin and got that there on time, had a little wait, then went over to uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, where we got a drop yard there and picked up uh, some fans from that drop yard and ran those on down to, jeez, I can't shift worth anything today, holy crap, okay. Uh, ran those on down to Nebraska and when I got to Nebraska picked up some uh, some other steel situation I believe they were wire coils uh, I mean they're basically just normal coils but they're uh, like I don't know maybe a quarter inch a quarter inch thick wire the whole way through and they're just wrapped up into a coil and those are easy enough to do. But ran that up to St. Paul again and picked up another relay that delivered in St. Paul, which I thought was kind of strange. Uh, it was picked up in St. Paul and delivered to St. Paul. And I don't know, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why they dragged it all the way to the, to the drop yard rather than just have the drive there pick it up, uh, deliver it. But that was the way that it went and I got I got short haul pay for that, and I believe that's 20 bucks, so it's not like I really, really mind, and you know, it's kind of interesting to go into the city a little more, something a little different. And then, uh, shoot, what happened after that? Well, after that, got a different load going to Indiana, and that wasn't a relay, that I picked up by my own, and. It was, in a, it was done in a timely fashion, and I, man, when I got to that 
uh, the receiver. Whew. Let me tell you something. That was probably the fastest unload process I've ever had. It took about a half hour to get fully untarped, unstrapped, and unloaded. So it was, you know, we were, we were burning through the day. Now after that happened, I was set up for a relay. Uh, and it was Friday, so I kind of figured it was someone's time to go home and I just need to continue on on uh, on their path and deliver a load for them. And so I called the driver. He said he was in Kentucky. And I said, you're in Kentucky. Uh, like, how far away do you think you are from me? And he, he's from Indiana, so he's like, yeah, I'm probably six hours away. And when I heard that, you know, red flags started going off everywhere. Uh, that's too that's way too far to, to deadhead. So basically came to the conclusion that we would just meet up at a, at a Flying J in Hopspot. I think that's how you say it. Hopstot? Hopstot? Something like that. Little place in Indiana. It's like a group of three truck stops. It's a pilot, a loves, and a Flying J. And the Flying J has got a pretty good parking lot, so we just settled on that one there. And he said that he had to finish up his reset and that would take seven hours and then he'd be headed up there and he'd get the load to me and uh, it's like you know I, I guess I can't really do anything about this and I'm just you know that's just go the way that it's going to be and so I sat there all day uh, probably from about three in the afternoon until one in the morning he showed up and at that point I mean, I had I had taken a nap for about an hour, and I was not really interested in continuing running uh, after that. You know, I, an hour of sleep is not enough. I did have my reset in, but I was not trying to do that. But basically, wasted that whole day away and decided to sleep until noon today. You heard that right. I decided somehow I didn't wake up until noon. Uh, so it's kind of a weird day, but those relays, some sometimes, I, I think this relay that I'm running right now, that's probably the longest I've ever had to wait for a relay, and I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, I did a little work on the channel, put up some thumbnails on videos and stuff like that, so it was, it wasn't wasted time, I mean, it, you know, gave me a little time to make the channel look a little nicer and all that so that was kind of cool uh, but yeah I mean these some of these relays I mean they're oh man sometimes they're set up beautifully sometimes you you can get to a drop yard after you dropped off your load and the load that you're picking up has still got 800 miles attached to it and it's sitting in the yard all the paperwork's there you just gotta drop up your equipment, hook up to the trailer, and you're gone. And those are those are fantastic. You know, those are a, they're they're real nice. But you know, what do they say? Life ain't all flowers. Sometimes you gotta feel the thorn. Actually, I think that's just a Sir Sturgill Simpson quote. But I mean, that's the truth about it. It ain't all flowers, but sometimes you gotta feel a thorn. And, to, and I mean, yesterday was just one of those days. That's just how it turned out. I felt the thorn, and <laughs> it sucked, but I don't know. The, the weekend might still turn out okay. Uh, I don't especially like running relays. I mean, I, I understand why, why the company does them. And I'm driving a company truck, so I'm gonna run whatever they, whatever they tell me to do, that's what I'm doing. That's as far as it goes right there, is what shows up on my computer, that's what I'm doing. When they tell me to be there, that's when I'm gonna be there. That's as simple as it gets as a company driver. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't exactly work out in your best favor, or in your best interest. Uh, you know, you just pick up a load that someone 
didn't want to sit on and so they dropped it as a relay and then you got to run the remaining miles off of that and I mean I think I'm not even sure when short haul pay comes into uh, comes into consideration uh, you know I'm not real well versed in the what do you want to call it the the way that our company functions basically the interest the intricacies of how you get paid and what everything costs and all that stuff I mean I don't really mind my dispatch does a good job looking out for me on that stuff and sometimes they'll throw something on there that I didn't even you know I didn't even realize was a thing and I mean that that's just how it is uh, and the other part about relays is and this is true with this load that I got right now, is sometimes people don't know what they're doing. Uh, I've, I've picked up loads that are under-secured. I've picked up loads that just, they have the right amount of securement on them, but they don't exactly know what they're doing. So it just, like the way that they do things are incredibly different as to com or as compared to how I do things and I mean maybe it works for them and whatever but it doesn't it certainly doesn't work for me but you just kind of work around that uh, and I mean I'm a, a stickler as far as it goes for tarps and I can tell you with no uh, with with like no hating my heart for the guy that did this but this load is tarp like crap I mean I don't know if he was just in a rush I don't know if he just doesn't really know what he's doing and you know all of that stuff is fine that's okay but I mean I, I like to have my tarps looking good looking real good I don't want any flap I don't want any parts sticking out I want them all to look real nice, and I mean that's just a personal thing, and, and a lot of guys apparently don't really care about that, or they just want to have the load covered and that's it, and after that they don't really care. And I mean sometimes you get into that yourself, it kind of, I mean it just happens, where sometimes things are not working out and you got something, I don't know like some type of weird load that you can't exactly cover the right way that you would want to but you do the best you can with what you got I don't know and plus I, I'm, I don't know if this is just me being uh, paranoid and more than likely it is but I don't really like <laughs> yeah this is paranoid I don't really like disconnecting from trailers and connecting to new ones. Uh, basically, the way that I look at it is that's just more chance to drop a trailer. And I have dropped a trailer, and it was the most terrifying thing in the world. Uh, luckily, it was just in the yard, and it, it wasn't my fault. It, I mean, they even told me, you know, this was a, a fifth wheel malfunction, and they still talked me through everything safety-wise, you know, to... Uh, so I'm assuming cover their butts and you know if something like that were to ever happen again they had someone out there you know watching me do what I'm doing and making sure that it's uh, done correctly essentially so I mean that memory just kind of lingers in my mind and every time I connect to a trailer I get a little paranoid about it uh, and I mean it's never happened since and I don't expect it to happen ever again and it's probably because I just make extra, I take extra caution when it comes to doing stuff like that now. And I mean, there's been all sorts of stuff that's happened in other aspects of driving that sort of check you. Like, you, you just get too, too used to how things are, and then one day you're like, oh, wait, what just happened there? Like, I, maybe I need to, you know, reevaluate and pay some more attention. I mean, those are those are good to have. Those little little wake up calls. 
But yeah, the the relay game can it can help you a lot, and sometimes it doesn't work out in your favor. What I've found is that if it doesn't work out in your favor on on this current relay, like I mean, there there's been relays that I've run that just don't really work out for me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But it always seems to uh, come back around in, in the weirdest types of ways. And I can't remember the exact load that I'm thinking about, but something did happen where I got, I sort of got screwed over. And I didn't say nothing about it. And I just kind of brushed it off. And then at a different time, I got a load that was very similar to the one that I had gotten prior and it turned out to work out very well for me. So sometimes, you know, it's like a yin and a yang thing. You know, that little black and white ball with the circles inside of them and they're all, like, they got a squiggly line through the middle or whatever. Yeah, it, I mean, it's the same thing in this industry. You get, you get the yin and the yang. You, you know, you take the good with the bad and sometimes things just work out. So I, I don't really stress about when bad things happen, and I just enjoy the good things when they do. I don't know. That's just me, though. And I know there's probably a bunch of drivers out there that just, you know, when something bad happens, they just fly off the handle, call into dispatch, and cuss them out. That's not, you know, that's not who I am. That's not my style at all. I don't really, you know, sometimes it's just not their fault. Sometimes it's not even your fault. You know, I mean, sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. You know? <laughs> like, you like you got a 7 and a 10, and you're like, hit me, and pulls up a 7 or a 6 or something. You're like, really? Come on. But then you get that same thing again, 7 and a 10. Comes around, you get the 5. You know? I don't know. That might be cheesy, but whatever. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, I catch a, a reasonable relay to keep this weekend going. And if not, I mean, I'm sure it'll work out in the end. It always does. But, yeah. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, enjoy the rest of this Indiana back road. And just cruising along through flat ground. Oh, yeah. So, I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.